Well, Simon McKenzie is the CEO of Vector, the actual one, unlike Zach, who was just pretending to be him. And I spoke to Simon McKenzie just over an hour ago, and we began with the tally of homes still without power. The tally is basically out of the 180,000 customers that were impacted by the storm on Tuesday. We've restored 95% approximately of those customers, so we still have around about 9,000 customers, which also includes some that went out as a result of the weather over the last 24 hours. Right, so you've lost a few uh, after the winds of last night. Yeah, there was probably about 2,000 that uh, we had to restore after winds last night, so we're currently sitting around about 9,000 customers that are still out. Um, unfortunately, those customers are out in predominantly out in the west of Auckland, so the areas that really bore the brunt of the, the weather event. Um, they saw you know, probably winds up to 200k as we've seen and they're in the high vegetation areas, so that is really the tough area for us to get back on. Okay, and so when will they be back on? We're hearing possibly as late as Tuesday in some cases? That's right, look, the reality is with the crews out in those areas now, a lot of the network out in those regions is really challenging given that it goes through bush and you know, 20, 30 kilometres out to Piha, for example, and the guys have got out there, we've had helicopters up in the air identifying as much of the damage as we can from the air and then they get into the ground and they find more damage. So there will be um, some customers that may still be out as, as late as Tuesday or Wednesday, but we're certainly aiming to get the bulk of that 9,000 back on uh, over the weekend. OK, so some as late as Tuesday or Wednesday. Do they know that yet? Have you managed to tell those customers? And we should point out that 9,000 customers isn't 9,000 people. Customers is a household, right, rather than a person. Do they know That's right. that, that it may be That's Tuesday right. or Wednesday? Well, we're certainly communicating that through a number of radio channels and putting it on our, um, our website and doing as best we can to update all those customers. We've had people out in the field uh, advising, for example, out in Piha that it may be extended time. So we're doing all we can to basically identify um, that those customers could be up for lengthy period of times. And the information we're putting up on our website identifies the areas that may be uh, impacted for longer periods. Yeah, I'm just looking at your website and it says Piha will be this weekend, uh, potentially as early as tomorrow. So that information's incorrect, isn't it? No, no, the Piha is we're hoping to get that up and running. It's it's some other pockets, it's Titarangi, some parts of Dairy Flat, Cow Copper Copper are the ones where, where um, those, those more, might be more extended. But at this point in time with regards to Piha, we're hoping to get that up as quickly as possible. That's an estimate um, and as we say, we'll keep updating that. Simon, I want to talk about undergrounding because you are right, 180,000 homes went out, homes and businesses. Uh, you are now back at about 9,000, so it has been a yep. very quick restoration project. But this issue wouldn't be anywhere near as great if more lines were underground, right? And it looks like you haven't spent terribly Not much exactly, money on that yep. in the past decade. Well, I think there's two things, John, is, um, you know, some areas just can't be undergrounded. I mean, the reality is, for example, getting an overhead line out to Piha through the bush is just not practical. Um, you know, undergrounding is a, is a very expensive exercise that doesn't necessarily solve problems. Um, unfortunately, as you saw through the Christchurch earthquake, they had a lot of underground network, and, and in an earthquake event, they, um, you know, that takes a very long time to repair. So undergrounding is not the the best solution. Now, with regards to, we have continued to do undergrounding. Um, there are regulatory requirements around what we building networks and where we have good existing network, then there's no reason why that can't stay up. The biggest issue here really comes down to, from my perspective, is, you know, there's a lot of trees across Auckland and in some parts of Auckland where you have a lot of trees, you can't necessarily underground down the street because you cut through the root systems. In other parts of Auckland, just basically trying to underground through volcanic rock is unbelievably challenging. So this is something that we'll have to look at with uh, council and uh, customers to say, well, what are the options? But 
I just say that you know undergrounding is not a silver bullet, and we have outages. We've got 55% of our network is underground, and uh, in those areas we have outages, and they typically take a long time to repair. Uh, where people dig into cables and those cables have to be located. Right, let's talk about those, sorry then, Simon to interrupt, but can we repair. talk about those underground areas in the events of the past few days? Yep. Were those underground areas impacted by sure. the storm this week? No, they weren't. In some parts of the city they weren't, but they may have had some impacts because some of the overhead network might have actually then transition from overhead into underground to right. supply so the, those so areas. The underground was I sound, say, right. So the underground can... infrastructure was sound. And the issue is that you, yep. or Vector, have paid out $1.7 billion in dividends over the last 12 years and spent only about 10% of that sum on undergrounding during that period. In other words, you seem to have prioritised dividend payment over uh, weatherproofing, infrastructure spend that would protect Auckland against such events when storms strike. Oh no, I, I don't think. I think there's, um, you know, there's a different context you're talking about, John. There's a business, obviously, we've paid dividend, and that's gone back to no, mainly to the people of Auckland. Um, you know, so as people know, that they get a cheque every year for around about three hundred and forty dollars, which is part of paying a dividend as a commercial enterprise. What we're talking about here is an extreme event that came through at hurricane force winds that basically uprooted trees and uh, basically pulled down some of our lines. And we're going to see more of that, aren't we? I mean, the problem is that all of the modelling suggests that we're going to get more such storms in Auckland. What are you saying? Are you saying that every time a strong wind hits the city, somewhere in the region of 180,000 homes might be impacted by that? Is there nothing more Vector can do? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that obviously we're looking at, uh, we've done a lot of modelling with regards to the potential impacts from climate change. Uh, what we do observe through climate change is, is that these types of events could be more frequent. I think that's reasonably well accepted now. And, you know, right across New Zealand, that's something that has to be looked at. It's not like Auckland is the only network in New Zealand that has overhead uh, assets, which is, in fact, I think we have one of the highest percentages of undergrounding. That's no comfort to customers, obviously, without power. What we're looking at is how can we have the conversation about is there more that we could do with councils, with regulators to think about how the tree management actually um, get managed because a lot of these trees that have come down have been from 20, 30 metres away. Um, where does it make sense to underground? Obviously we'll look at that but I'd just like to also say that undergrounding also comes at a, at a very high cost. When we think about undergrounding it can be you know, five to six times more expensive than an overhead network and the balance that we're always trying to make with regards to um, customers and also with regulators is what's the right balance because, you know, when everything's going fine, people don't like high power bills. So it is, it's a judgment, it's a delicate issue. Y yes, it, yes, it is. It certainly is. But people want power, first and foremost, don't they? And they also want clarity, too, when the power's out. And I'm just looking at your website. You were talking about Dairy Flat and Kokapa Kappa. Well, you were saying uh, they're going to be back on Tuesday or Wednesday. Your website is still saying tomorrow night, which is really confusing and frustrating. Who's right? Yeah, what we're saying is some people, some pockets of people in those areas may still be out. This is, and, and I totally agree that the information has been a challenge. It's still uh, very difficult for us to give exact times. What we're wanting to say is people should prefer some people, pockets of those areas could still be problematic um, later in, uh, sorry, into early next week.